How are we doing ladies and gents, boys and girls, welcome back. My name's Tom Dyer. Today I'm going to teach you how to make your flare bartending as smooth as silk. There is seven there is seven top tips I'm going to go through today, so make sure you stick around until the end to get all of those tips. We all start somewhere and that smoothness does generate over time, but these tips are going to give you a head start so that you can start making your flare look smooth and silky and sexy. Now we do have to ask ourselves a question, what is smoothness in flare bartending? So smoothness is being able to perform your flare bartending tricks in a visually appealing way with effortlessness. It's not stopping and starting and readjusting and moving around too much to try and make it look good. It's about making it look smooth and silky and, ooh, I should stop dancing. Now, when we are talking about smoothness, we are looking at the type of flair that you see in show flair and competitions, but you can still be smooth behind the bar. So we are gonna reference flair behind the bar, working flair, craft flair, that kind of flair as we go through as well. Smoothness is also about linking your moves together. Essentially, that's how, what it comes down to is taking one move and another move, linking them together in a smooth way. But there's many other factors which come into play to ensure that your flair is looking smooth and dynamic and sexy silky. Okay, no more talky talky, let's get on to some flary flary. Top tip number one is building your vocabulary of moves. Now that means being able to do a wide variety of many different moves. And that doesn't mean lear just learning how to do a hand stall, an arm stall, an elbow stall, and a shoulder stall. But it also means when you're doing swipe throughs like this, how many different variations of that can you throw in there to, to make your flair look varied and different and different spins and throws and reverse catches and what have yous. So sometimes those smaller moves like the swipe throughs can be a lot bigger in making your flair look smoother than learning how to do the next big flash move, for example. You can set yourself different challenges. How many different ways can you pick a bottle up off of the floor? Because if you're practicing, the chances are you're gonna be dropping your bottle. So instead of picking it up the same every single time, use that time to try and find different ways of picking the bottle up off the floor so that you're then building your skill, building your control, and eventually you may even find a move which you can use from picking the bottle up off of the floor. You can also start using your other hand. So start with sort of simple moves like thumb rolls and finger rolls like this, so that you can start building up the dexterity in your other hand. Plus you can also look at different ideas that you can come up with from the same position. What I mean is if you have a, a hand stall, what can you do from this position where you can flip forward you can flip backwards, you can roll around into your hands, you can roll sideways, you can flip to a bump and carry on, you can throw behind your back. There's a million different things that you can do. So look at the different variations that you can come up with from the same position. Maybe it's a back to front throw, or maybe it's a behind the back throw, where I showed 20 variations of the behind the back, which you can check out up there. But test yourself and see what you're capable of and start building up that vocabulary of moves. The last point on this tip is stop snatching the bottle all of the time. This is your snatch and you can use it and it's a great move, it's a very powerful move. But if you watch my flair and you watch my smoothness, very rarely do I snatch the bottle. I try and keep the bottle moving separate from the tin because it help, helps things look a lot smoother and nicer. If I do snatch like this, then I use my body to make that part of the flair routine look smoother, which I'm gonna to get to on a later tip. Just quickly, before we go any further, if you do like the video, don't forget to click the like button because what that does, it will show this video to more people on YouTube, spreading flair to more people around the world and building the flair bartending community. Okay, top tip numero dos, slow down. Just slow down, take it easy and don't rush. 
Normally when we're performing flair behind the bar or on stage, your adrenaline is gonna be pumping, your heart's gonna be pumping, and that's gonna make you flare faster. It will also make you more sketchy, more alert, and it will bring your smoothness down. If we take a look at a bartender like Dario Di Carlantonio, who has a super sexy, smooth style of flair, I don't know why I'm flair, I'm gonna show you a video of it right now. He doesn't flare very fast, and what that's doing is giving him the time to think about the next move, giving him the time to move his body and his hand to make it look smooth, and he's giving time to the audience to see what he's doing and to be able to uh, associate what he's doing and, and understand what he's doing. So slowing down can really help you build your smoothness and see the pathways that your bottle and your tin or whatever object you're using is creating. And I'm gonna talk about pathways in a little while as well. This is gonna go super deep, so get prepared. But slowing down is, is a really useful way of, of building your smoothness. Sometimes you can slow down at different points in your routine. So you can just, you know, accentuate different parts of it, uh, be able to perhaps give a wink or a smile, whatever it may be. You don't always have to keep that same rhythm. It's nice if you're trying to follow a beat or whatever it may be, but perhaps you're even pouring with the jigger and you, you do your pour, slow and then throw, for example. So slowing down or changing the tempo of your flare can really help your smoothness or really help your flare look a lot smoother. Even stopping, so even stopping in the shaker on the back of your hand or whatever it may be, and then changing a position to then move on can help that smoothness. It may seem counterintuitive, but what it does again, it gives you the chance to think, it gives other people the chance to think and appreciate, and it gives you a chance to move as well, move to a different position. So perhaps you've done a hand still here, but you wanna come over here. So you've stopped, and you see I've, whew, I've moved everything. I'm using the shaker as well. I could just go like this. It doesn't look very smooth. But stop. Whew, whew. I can even throw in a thumb roll with the shaker, move the shaker like this, and then flip forwards. And that shaker is helping me show off the next part of the move, which is the flip with the bottle. So as I come around, the bottle is still, the shaker is moving, and then I can th either th throw and throw, or whatever it may be. I hope that you understand that, because we're moving on to the next tip. Top tip, numero tres. Use less objects. I know some people are not gonna like this because there's a trend in flair for a few years or so now where difficulty is king, basically. And it's not, it's not king. Some of my best moves are with bottle and tin. Some of the best moves that you'll ever see are with bottle and tin. And you can do more and be more creative, creative with a bottle and tin. Now, when it comes to smoothness, you can be a lot smoother because pretty much everyone only has two hands. <laughs> and that means you've only got two objects which means you're able to manipulate them in a much more creative and different way than if you were using three tins or four tins in a bottle, for example. However, this doesn't mean that you cannot use multiple objects. But if you are gonna use multiple objects, you need to ask yourself a question. Let's say you're gonna use three bottles, for example. Ask yourself the question, how can I make my three bottles routine look like my bottle and tin routine? Now, for me, your bottle and tin is what we call your bread and butter. It should be your most creative flair, your most uh, smooth flair, and it should be the one you go to to warm up or practice as you, get, as you get started, as you get better. Now, of course, not everybody loves bottle and tin, but again, as I said, it's the one which is probably gonna be the smoothest out of all the sequences that you have. So if you are gonna do three bottles, you need to ask yourself, how can you make that look like bottle and tin? And that is by starting simple and trying to follow those same lines that I mentioned a minute ago, which we're gonna get to with your three bottle sequences. It is a lot more difficult, but if you take your time, you'll realize you can be smooth with multiple objects as well. Top tip number quattro is presentation. Presentation, presentation, presentation. There's a few aspects to this, and the first part I wanna talk about is remembering that 
you're behind a bar. So you're gonna have a bar in front of you. You're probably gonna have a wall behind you or a back bar behind you. So generally your space is like this. Although your practice area may be bigger or your space may be bigger, if you try and imagine that that is your space, everything should be here in this vicinity. And what you should try and remember is your flare is painting pathways when it's, when it's flowing and when it's moving. So if I'm using a bottle and a tin like this, the bottle is creating a circle here. If I take the tin away, okay, and then I stop throwing the bottle, the bottle is just doing a circle here. Now, if I bring the tin back into play and I stop the bottle, okay, and I just use the tin, now I don't throw the tin, the tin is just doing a circle here. And it's the same situation. If I go sideways, okay, the bottle is going over my shoulder like this. So you're creating these circles and these pathways. And I have to remember that the audience is looking at me in this way. So for me to do this move like this, facing in that direction is a lot better and more easier than if I'm gonna do it this way, for example. But to stand sideways, this move becomes better because it looks more visually appealing to people. So learning how to present your moves and how they should look is gonna make your flair look a lot smoother as well. This also comes down to moving your body into the right place to be able to make your flair look as visually appealing to the people that are watching it. And that brings me on to top tip number five is move your body. Move your body, yeah, move your body. Uh. One of my pet hates, unfortunately, that I've seen over the, a few years or so is movement without any necessary. So I'm seeing, woo! There's no smoothness in that. That's just landing the bottle in the shaker and then spinning around on the spot. Or sometimes I'll see a snatch, woo! Like this. Again, there's no point. Use movement for a purpose. If you need to turn around, create a move which uses movement for you to turn around. And I'll give you two examples. Using this swipe through that I was talking about before, okay, I'm gonna just use the same move and then I'm gonna go, wee, poof, full 360. And all I'm doing is I'm bringing the bottle here, I'm turning with the bottle, again, following that line, that circle, that pathway that we spoke about, Coming back to front, I'm opening my arm, the bottle is coming under, and then I can carry on with that same movement. Using that same swipe through technique, now I'm gonna turn the other way, like this. The bottle is still going in the same direction. So when I'm going this way, the bottle is still moving in that same direction. But when I'm turning the other way, now it's, and I'm, I'm turning in the opposite direction. But if you see, what I'm doing is as I turn, my body is twisting, my feet are being put into the right position, I'm throwing the bottle, I'm following the bottle, and then I'm catching the bottle. So I'm using the pathway of the bottle to, in, to dictate where my body should go and where I should turn. Another way to turn around I had was this one. Okay, so moving your body and putting it into the right point and the right position for each move is really gonna help your smoothness grow. Tip number six, work on your links. Your linking moves. Now this is a tough one. A lot of people ask me, how can I link moves together? Well, the easiest answer is you link them together however which way that you want. Because if you learn how to do it your way, it's eventually gonna become a lot smoother for you. If you're trying to learn another way to do it all of the time, then it's not you, it's not gonna be natural to you. So you have to find the natural progression or the natural idea for you for those moves to link together. But here's how I used to link all of my moves together when I first started making sequences and routines. I would literally start my routine with the easiest moves I knew, which was pretty much a couple of different swipe throughs. And then I would get to a point like this, where I've thrown the, the, the bottle like this and the tin and I'm in this position. So I think, okay, where can I go from here? And this comes to building my vocabulary of moves. Perhaps I wanna go behind the back. Okay, so I can go behind the back like this, or I can go into the shaker like this, or I can bump it behind my back like this, or whatever variation I want, I can choose that. 
So I would, I would do the move, stop, and then I'd think about the next step. So from here, I can come up behind my head, or I can snatch and turn around, or I can throw it over and snatch it over here. And then I would do the next step. So I'd go, bum, 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 bum. Okay, from here, where do I go? And I'd go, right, the bottle and the tin is moving this way. I'm following the path. I'm following the lines of the objects. So I can come over my shoulder like this. Cool, I'm gonna use that. But how do I finish that? Perhaps it's just catch, catch. Or perhaps I wanna lampshade. And so I make a decision on every step and every move that I do. As I grow my sequence and grow my routine, I then go back and I practice and I repeat and I repeat and I repeat. And over the years, I slowly got better and better and better at being able to do that. That move started to flow naturally and everything started to go a lot smoother because I'd taken the time to follow those pathways and those circles and move my body accordingly to make everything look super silky smooth. Just like that. <laughs> Okay, top tip number seven. And this one is the biggest one really. And you're not gonna like it, but it is the biggest one. And that is give it time. Smoothness comes with time and practice. And the more you practice and the more you try out your moves, the smoother they will become. Because at the beginning of learning and over the shoulder, you're still learning how to move every part of your body. There's so many micro movements happening within your body, hands, shoulders, head, eyes, arms, legs, whatever, that you don't notice it. But the more you do it, the more you're gonna get used to those movements to the point where you don't even need to look when you're throwing it over your shoulder because you've done it a million bazillion times already. And then that smoothness will come from there and you will learn different ideas to link things together and to make it smoother. Your freestyle will become better. And the journey to get to that will be the best. Because there is no end. The only the end of it is when you quit flat. So enjoy the steps, enjoy the journey, try and follow all those steps, and you will get smoother and smoother and smoother. Okay, a bonus tip or more of an exercise that you can do to try and help your smoothness. And that is simply work on your swipe throughs. So this is a swipe through. I mean, you can just do this to start with, but simply work on your swipe throughs and just see how you can make it move smoothly and simply like this and try and think up different variations, okay? But just try and keep the bottle and the tin moving and you can throw the tin from a different place, place or a location. You can throw the bottle into a different place or location. You can change up the direction and bring it over again. Or you can swap objects and try a different way with the, with the tin, okay? And work on those swipe throughs and simple movements like this because you're gonna think about your style and your creativity and your smoothness a lot more than if you're trying to do a big move, for example. So try that out. Let me know how you get on and see if that's gonna improve some of your smoothness in your flare. There we go. Well, I hope that's gonna help you. I hope that's gonna help improve your smoothness. Let me know how you get on. If you have any questions about this video, put it in the comments box below. Um, I can go a hell of a lot deeper into this subject, but it's gonna make the video way too long. So perhaps I'm gonna do a live stream on Patreon about this in the future, but that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you do want to see what's happening in Patreon, you can come and join mm, these living legends right here and become part of our Patreon community where I'm posting more content. And as I said, live streams will be happening. Plus you can get personal contact with me through the messaging system on there as well. So there is a link down below where you can go and check that one out, go and have a look. And if you have any questions about it, do let me know. But also if you are new around here and if you made it this far, thank you very much. Don't forget to hit subscribe, like the video if you liked it. That'll let me know that I can make more videos like this and it will show this to more people on YouTube. But thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope this has been helpful. Until next week, I'll see you then.